Hi, good. How are you? Thank you for I'm having good. me. I'm good. Thank you. Sorry, I keep moving around because I only just see there's a little bit of a beam <laughs> behind me, but I hope this isn't too jarring for everybody. Um, so yeah, so um, we're here to talk about CPG this year and obviously next year. Um, I guess you know I'd love to before we move into sort of specifics, like generally, sort of tell us, you know, what what type of year have you guys had at, at, at Stella? Absolutely, and and thank you for having me. Um, just an awesome day to kind of hear everyone speak. Uh, I mean, like everyone else, obviously, we you know, 2020 has been um, a pretty uh, uh, crazy and, and epic year in, in many ways, um, obviously, personally and, and professionally. I think um, the amount of shifts that we have done on Stella um, has been uh, just pretty impressive, I think, in terms of how we try to react and be um, relevant to what's happening to consumers right now um, and what's happening to our customers as well, right? Um, obviously, as a beer, we bars and restaurants and and um, grocery stores and retailers are such a big part of of getting the product to our consumers' hands. So, really had to had to pivot the plans to make sure that uh, to Ritesh's point, uh, that the product could still be there in people's fridges. Um, and we can be doing uh, something that really helps the community along the way, which I think was really important to me, to our company, to the brand, because um, the two the two go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah that's cool. So um, thinking then about specifics, uh, I know that you guys usually, um, well, pretty much every year have a pretty big stake in the Super Bowl. How, how did that change for you? Yeah, I mean, we just, you know, that was pre pre pre-COVID now at this point, it feels like January and February were yeah. years ago. Um, uh, we're, we're a Chiefs family over here, so you kind of use that as a gauge of of timing. Um, and what we did was that we actually decided before the year started that we wanted to do something different. We wanted to show up in a different way. Yeah. Um, and so we launched our experiential platform, which, which seems crazy right now, <laughs> launch a new experiential in real life platform. Um, but we did something called Port Stella down in Miami during the Super Bowl, um, brought a little bit of uh, European, uh, you know, oasis to the city amongst the craziness um, and gave people kind of a once in a lifetime uh, weekend where you could dine at restaurants that had never been to the U.S. before, global restaurants, um, which with amazing chefs, you could have sessions with um, celebrity hosts to learn all different types of ways to kind of save our life. Um, musical acts, of course, at night, kind of bringing that that flavor and transport it all in a, an amazing uh, boat experience. Uh, so when we kicked that off in the beginning of the year, the plan was that that experience was going to roll out around the country um, yeah. in real yeah. life. And, and, and obviously, we quickly pivoted from there. But the intention started and I think has really followed through on everything we've done since then. Yeah. So I wanted to ask about that, actually, the, the Dike Together Apart uh, campaign, I guess, uh, initiative that you guys set up um, in Chicago and, and also in general, your sort of affiliation with, with the hospitality industry and specifically like cafes and restaurants as well as bars. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. I, I, so, you know, we'd always such a big part of the sell of businesses in the U.S. is in bars and restaurants. I, I kind of always say that it's it's where our soul is and it's I know it's where consumers and people's you know memories are made and and birthdays are celebrated and girls nights are are, are, are happening. Um, and so right when uh, the pandemic hit, um, we wanted to to do something that both gave inspiration to consumers and got them content at home. Um, as Sarah was just saying, even on the milk side, right? People's people started becoming quite um, crafty and, and 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 making food at home. I um, mean, we wanted to give consumers something interesting to to do that, but we also wanted to make sure we were helping and giving the immediate support that the bars and restaurants needed. So, you know, in the beginning of the of the pandemic, it was all around getting cash in hand right to the bars and restaurants as as yeah. as fast as possible to keep them open. So our way was really inspiring consumers to go buy gift cards to the local bars and restaurants, um, and 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 giving them kind of value to do that by giving them content and and pieces with with people like Eva Longoria and Marcus Samuelson. Um, and then as time go has gone on, we've we've basically evolved the platform. So based on what's happening with consumers and, and the industry, we've evolved. So we went from that side of things 
Um, we evolved to working with the National Restaurant Association, right, on making sure that consumers felt safe um, and understood the safety precautions that bars and restaurants were going through um, and providing content that way. And then, um, as you mentioned, then just a few weeks ago, launching our Dine Together Apart in Chicago, um, yeah. which was a way to get bars and restaurants to stay open when start, things were starting to get colder with these like absolutely beautiful greenhouses. Um, and so, and, and that is now live in Harlem. We went live, um, we, we launched last Thursday with the Frederick Druggist Boulevard um, uh, partnership. So just really trying to make sure that we evolve the platform, but with the same intention of everything we can do to still have people savor their time together with Estella uh, safely. Um, and I think you're just going to continue to see us do that and evolve to what the, the industry and consumers really need. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like that idea of savoring the time together. That's a, that's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. Um, are you are you expanding that to any other cities, warmer ones? <laughs> we, we, yeah, no, we hope to. So we obviously launched um, in Harlem, um, which was uh, just really, I think, important for us and, and obviously trying to support bars and restaurants um, owned by, by minority owners who are also yeah, yeah. greatly impacted. So yeah, the goal will be to try to scale it more working with our, our regions to to build that out. But um, yes, I, that that's our intention to keep to keep doing that. Okay, very cool. Yeah. And I, it's, it sounds like overall, you you guys have done some pretty, pretty awesome stuff this year. Like, what, what would you say were the highlights? looking back or what do you think has had like the most impact or been the most successful? Um, I mean, I definitely think that, you know, dine together and our return to restaurant program for me has, has been um, probably the most impactful just because you're seeing both the consumer get value out of it. Um, the industry supported because of it, obviously the brand loved um, more of it. So that's just been really, I think, close to all of our hearts. Um, on sell and I think has added a ton of value. Um, but there's just been so many projects that were either in the works or changed because of everything that, you know, I'm super proud of. We, we launched an entire summer campaign virtually and via Zoom yeah, yeah. and creativity that, you know, it is just um, was unimaginable, I think, before then, um, which was incredibly something proud of, of ours, um, as well as just being really I think agile, as Sarah was even saying before, in terms of yeah. what consumers are looking for and, and how as a brand do we move out of our own way. Um, so uh, th those those examples, I would say I'm proud of, but the list goes on <laughs> for yeah. sure. I, I, I love Sarah's point about how, you know, everything had been so expedited and, you know, like we don't even know about next week. And I guess <laughs> historically a brand like yours much, must have had such a sort of, yeah, very, very well structured, long plan for the year. And I, I, I mean, has that, can, do, would you, would you echo that, that you've kind of been so much more, um, I, I guess nimble, but also just not had that foresight of, you know, the typical year and the calendar of events and things that you could usually work towards and, and predict? Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, it, it's happened across the board. Um, and we have we have done that. I, I think the, the fundamentals of how we've executed in the programs have totally have to sh have have had to shift. What what has been kind of interesting and fun to see too, though, is a lot of our ideas um, were probably in a form already baking, um, but we just had to pivot more around what was going to make the most impact for a consumer, what was going to make the most impact yeah. from a yeah. media perspective, right for the brand. Um, and also our communication style, even amongst our team and with all of our, our partners, I think that has obviously really changed too, right? Even the way we used to do feedback and the way, you know, we would, you know, share out internally, it's it's kind of taken out of a bit of the, the fluff, if you want to say, and gone straight to like, here's what we want to do. This is why we think it's going to be impactful. Um, here's how we're going to do it, um, which I think has, has just added a huge amount of value for our brand and for the company. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, if I think something you said is kind of interesting there because I, I've been thinking also about, you know, I'm at Media Monks and, you know, we, as well as all the other things we do, a big part of what we did was, well, used to be and hopefully will be in future events, you know, physical, experiential, very technology driven. I mean, we we worked with with you guys and with Mother on the um on the Water Day activation in Grand Central, for example. Yeah. Um the the kind of the pivot towards virtual events and remote events and things like that uh which has also been like 
you know, a huge part of what we've moved to. I think in some ways will fizzle in terms of the buzz of it, but I think a lot of that will remain. Like, yeah. how, how are you... How are you how are you factoring that in into your I guess looking to the future when the sort of more traditional like physical experiential side of things will hopefully return? Uh, do you, like do you, if you, if you get my question, that was a bit yeah, long. No, I, <laughs> no, I, I do. I mean, I think. Like, what's the role going to be in the future for for all the the virtual stuff? Do you think we're all just going to beeline straight back to to physical more visceral experiences, or, or do you think there'll be more of a balance? Yeah, no, I, I don't. I, I know um, Marcel, our, our US CMO, always says, like, we're going to the new normal. We're not going to go back. And and I totally su- agree and support that idea because I think we're never going to go back to the 100% live. Or I think what um, brands and marketing teams used to do, which was like build the event and then the next day talk about what was going to be the social content. And it was almost this. Um, it, it wasn't as connected, I think, as it could be. Um, it was more siloed thinking. And I think now as we're thinking about plans for next year, of course, live hopefully will come back in some form. And I think that human interaction, everyone is is just dying for it in, in many ways. Um, but I think how we use technology, how we think about amplification, I think uh, scale of the physical event probably is less about amount of people coming through physically and much more around how do you use technology to tell and reach kind of that larger audience. So uh, that's how our team is thinking about it. Of course, with the asterisk of when we can go live, it makes sense in some places. But um, I think we will probably think, you know, almost virtual or, or technology first. Um, yeah. And then think about then what is the live extension of it? Um, because at the end of the day, God forbid it would happen, obviously, uh, again like this. But I think it has just made us all as marketers um, not think in such a box as to how experiential events should come to life. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And I mean, I guess it's so much more democratic now in yeah. terms of, like, you know, the, the barriers to entry. For example, like, you know, when we in the past and again, I hope these things return. We've done these awesome like you know physical meets kind of virtual reality experiences at comic-con and things like that which are super cool but the throughput is so small and they're so awesome it it just seems a shame that you know everybody can't join in or at least even if you can't do it physically then at least you can track and engage and somehow influence it through you know a social interface or things like that that you know i think that will have to stay because it's been like such a leveler or an equalizer Absolutely. And I think to your point, I think in the beginning, there was kind of this one upping mentality happening of like, and I'm going to do it with it, you know, and, and now I think it's, it's, it's more around like the value of the content, right? And, and having it be something that people really want to not because it's just the new shiny object, but instead, because people are so inundated now with virtual experiences, I think people are being a just more more choiceful, right? Yeah. And so I think it's it's the content story that you're trying to tell, um, being true to the brand, but what a consumer actually wants to see that I that I think is where we're going to spend much more of our time, uh, just because the novelty of, of it obviously has worn off. And so yeah, I think yeah. that's where we're spending a lot more of our time again is like, what is the story? What are we trying to achieve for the brand? Um, and at what moment of the year? And then starting to think through channel wise, r- what is the right way to execute it? Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, and it, it's nice to hear because it would be a shame if everything rushed back to the sort of like bragging rights of like individualism and so on. And, uh, you know, but that said, I think you know, there's going to be a little wave or a frenzy of travel, hopefully in hospitality, you know, at home as well as going away. Like, what are you most looking forward to about the sort of the the new normal or the next normal or whatever people are calling it? 21. I I think, yeah, no, I think from a, so from a brand and, and professional side, I mean, I, I'm excited to the momentum, you know, amongst all of it for the brand is, is, is really strong, um, which is awesome. Um, in amongst such a hard year. And so when I, when I look forward in, in whatever the new normal is, I'm excited to just see that kind of momentum continue to translate and see how kind of this idea of, of, you know, 
whether it's helping the restaurant industry and giving consumers content or whether it's telling a new story um, for one of our innovations, like I'm just excited to see how the creativity of the ideas continue to, to, to grow um, in a, in a, in a, in a personal way, just being able to see friends and family and meeting yeah, yeah. teachers and stuff like the things that you, you didn't think you would miss, obviously I'm excited for what that looks like. But, um, I think it's just pretty, um, it's pretty humbling. I think in many ways to just see the resilience of, of the brand teams of the companies of, of people, um, and what we've all been able to do. Um, so just excited to kind of see that continue to evolve. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and I was going to ask, yeah. So on on a well, you you mentioned on a personal note about uh, about that. Do you are you able to give us a little insight into some of the things you're planning next year? Back to professional. So in 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 terms of the calendar, <laughs> I don't have anything that good personal. Oh, no, well, it's, there's a good answer, is there? But uh, no, professionally uh and 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 across stella like what for example uh you know can i can i ask about the super bowl next year you you can i don't know what i can tell you um no <laughs> no you can i mean we um we're obviously want to want to continue to have um a lot of momentum um and and just like this year we think about things uh, we kind of start from scratch every year right so we don't we don't tend to just redo anything twice so we'll that i guess is what i can say for next year that we have some really exciting things that are fresh for the brand again all around kind of making sure that people feel like um cell is helping them kind of savor socially safely together um and then i think just on on other pieces um you know we have uh you know innovation has been a big part of the brand this year um, we launched something called Stella Solstice Lager, which was a limited edition product this summer, uh, which did um, super well. And again, I think really a, a fresh perspective amongst a crazy year, um, very premium offering. So innovation for us will continue to be a big focus next year. Um, and then and then just more in terms of being part of the, the restaurant and at home meal occasion, just such a critical part for the brand. It's really where our soul and, and where where the, our consumers are. So a lot more uh, exciting things, I think, to come on that front, too. Cool. That, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask, you know, it would be remiss of me to not ask um, about uh, change up the usual. And specifically, this the 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 dude, yes, uh, SJP and all of that. So for those on on the um on the talk who who don't know about this, I mean, I I thought it it, it pretty much like you know won the year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> very very cool, very very smart. Such a sort of dichotomy of 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 icons, I guess. Um, tell tell us a little bit about that if you don't mind. Yeah, I mean, it was um, man, that was kind of the a highlight of of kicking off the 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 brand in in the year. I guess it's been over 2 years now, which is crazy. Um yeah, I just joined the brand team. Um and you know, we we really wanted to do something different for the brand, right? Give give the brand and the relationship with water.org, which is our better world program, um a fresh take and something modern. Um, and and the storyline of bringing the two icons like that together was uh, epic to say the least. Um, getting getting to getting to do a few calls with Jeff Bridges was was a was definitely a highlight of my career. The guy is unbelievable. Um, and yeah, the storyline was was just so simple in many ways, which was like to take two culturally relevant and icons and and help them and have them kind of show people that by simply changing their drink to a Stella that you could do good for someone else. Right. It, it, in many ways, it was, it was so simple, but it was just executed, um, obviously humbly, but just in such a, such a wonderful way. And the characters were so perfect. Um, so yeah, it, it, that really kicked off. I think a lot of the storytelling we've done since then and, and using, um, icons or celebrities in a way that really feels authentic to yeah. us as a brand and them as as people. Um, and yeah, in the meantime, I the, the day they went to shoot Super Bowl, I, I was having my second having my second kid. So it was uh, it was a it was like a, a, a wow. thing of all sorts of things. <laughs> One time it was pretty awesome. Yeah, congratulations! Was awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, 
And on, on that note, it's, it's interesting you mentioned celebrities because, I mean, it is it is so difficult. And I, you know, Stella is such a sort of specific, I think, very modest uh, or humble and, and, you know, discreet type of brand. Like, that. do you... Is it is it more of a challenge to find celebrities to to match up with than than other places you've 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 worked or, or witnessed? Um, I think we're just a lot more um, thoughtful about it. I think we are very much in the camp of finding you know true kind of brand advocates. Um, I, I never and we never want the storyline to be that we you know just ch- chose this celebrity for for a random reason. We're really pretty intentional about it. Um, so I think it's been unique, I guess, in that way compared to perhaps other brands. Um, and then really, I think at the choice of, of who we work with and, and the story, uh, th- their value is set, I think has to, has to really line up as well. Um, but yeah, in general, and in, in a great way to your point, you know, most of the, the people that we've spoken to are, are big fans of the brand and it's, it's somewhat of a, it's an exciting conversation when those always happen. Um, so yeah, we have, we have some exciting things in store for next year on that one too, that I think will be a, a, a pleasant and exciting surprise and something new. Uh, nice. Yeah. Look forward to that. Yes. Um, on, on that note, slightly different, <laughs> but, um, influencers, like, do you, can you tell us a little bit about the, your brand's influencer strategy? Absolutely. So um, for us, we kind of think about, in the same way of celebrities, we, we really think about how we work with influencers from a social aspect that are authentic, obviously, both from a paid and, and unpaid perspective. Um, we kind of have this sell squad, as we call them, that are, are kind of long-term influencers and partners with ours. Um, and obviously we bring, we try to bring in new people, especially around, you know, innovation products. Like we said, like I said, with Solstice, um, Midnight Lager, which is our holiday limited edition that's out right now. Um, so yeah, it's a big part of the brand. I think for premium brands like Stella, um, it needs to feel really authentic. Um, I think there is that really fine line with, with obviously being promotional in many ways, but doing it in a way that, um, uh, consumers don't get just turned off from it really quickly. Um, and I think we and, and the team, our, our social and digital team have done a really good job at kind of navigating uh, how does a premium brand like ours do it. Um, and so, yeah, influencers, big part of big part of what we have done and are going to continue to do next year as well. All right. Um, you mentioned Solstice and and the holiday, holiday special. Um, yeah. How... I mean, t- to me, and you know, long time Stella aficionado, drinker, et cetera, et cetera, grew up with it. Um, it's it's a very tight portfolio, and I mean, there are it's unlike, I guess, many American beers where there are so many variations and 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 special editions and things like that. Like, is that that sort of product differentiation um, and diversification? Like, is that a, a future plan, or is it still very much a uh, you know, a rarity. No, I, I mean, I would say we've, we've definitely opened a bit up. Um, I think, I, our, you know, as we call it the mother brand, right. And in, in our green bottle and, and in the chalice is, um, just so special and, and beautiful and, and holds a very, uh, a strong place in many consumers' minds and obviously in ours as a, as a portfolio. Um, but what we found like everyone else, right. And in all different categories is, especially in the US, innovation is, it's critical. It's critical in terms of making sure that we stay relevant um, and making sure that we're we're kind of fitting what a consumer needs and a, and a category needs. So Midnight Lager was our first limited time offering um, last year, um, which uh, did, did really well. And we kind of kept it as, which made sense for us as kind of a holiday beer in general. It, it, it was a natural progression, if you want to say, in our innovation. And then this year with Solstice, um, again, we knew that consumers are looking for a premium, you know, sessionable lager, but there really isn't one. Um, and so Solstice uh, does and fit that need. But again, still with all the credentials and 
and the things that consumers love about sell in general. So I think we won't, we, you won't seeing, won't be seeing, you know, a million things coming for us. It's not about just filling for new liquids or, um, but I think we now have that kind of staple, those staples. And then for us, innovation and ideas of, you know, packaging and, and other pieces for us is I think where we can, we, you'll, you'll continue to see more for us moving forward. Cool. Yeah. Right. Well, well, I hope well, so, you have a Stella there somewhere. <laughs> I said, hopefully you have a Stella there somewhere. I, yeah, I, I, I think I do downstairs, actually. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm in my my old childhood bedroom. I'm back for the holidays, <laughs> so I do not tend to drink in my bedroom. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm in London, so I can get it in any pub. Um, so speaking of the holiday season, obviously it's been like super mixed um, in terms of like, you know, different parameters and limitations like COVID restrictions, like globally, uh, and I guess different ways that people have been able to celebrate or not, like how, like from an overall brand and even, you know, if you're just focused on the US, like it's so huge. And again, different geographical changes and, and what people can do where, like, how, how's that looking for you guys, like at the moment in terms of sales, activity, engagement, everything? Yeah. Really? I mean, I think um, where we saw, obviously, with with to your point, with with most bars and restaurants in general being, um, you know, not not all closed, but obviously much much smaller in terms of traffic and and pieces. That you know, a lot of the focus for us um, has been to support them, and then of course from from a brand side and sales side, making sure that the rest, uh, excuse me, the the grocery stores and. Um, 7-Elevens and some of our chains are definitely um, well stocked and, and well loved. Um, so that's been a big focus for us. And I think you saw, I feel like all of the memes, right? Uh, New Year's Eve was like wanting to be celebrated earlier. Christmas, Christmas trees were being put up before Thanksgiving. So I think for us, we kind of went in that same way, which was like as of October, let's, let's call it the holiday season. So we've been trying to push early. Um, and then a lot of the experiences that we're doing outside of the Dine Together Apart were, were virtual, right? So we just did a program called uh, Chalice Choir, where we gave consumers a chance to win um, uh, an in-home Broadway show, uh, knowing that that tradition was going to be impacted, and then supporting, you know, bartenders that are out of work because of that. So, again, just trying to find ways that we keep and we give consumers their traditions in a, in a virtual way. Um, and somewhere that Stella obviously kind of natural, naturally fits and falls. So uh, it's not, I can't believe it. It feels like Christmas already because the Christmas tree was up so early, but there's still a couple of weeks left. So um, I think people are really trying to get the most out of it um, in, in the safe ways that they can. Your uh, your Christmas setup looks awesome. Yeah. By the way. It, looks, it looks pretty <laughs> Christmassy. I <laughs> really filled it up. You your stockings already. <laughs> That, that, when you have kids, you, pretty, yeah, you, you have to use Santa as a... Are they, a, are they filled already? No, they're not filled. They're empty. Okay. Just for show. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wanted to ask, you, talk, you talked about innovation. Um, and, and, of course, you know, that covers so many things. And especially to your point, you know, in CPG, it, it's, it's you know, innovation and in points of sale, packaging, all that type of stuff. Um, have you, as a brand, explored um, esports? Uh, and and the gaming community um at all uh and and if not uh why not or yeah. or, or if not do you have any plans to no it's it's a good point as so from a portfolio perspective obviously many of the other brands um uh, you know bud light obviously does a ton with esports um yeah. stella we have we have not um i think for us at uh, we would and we will consider based on the where the consumer is spending their time, right? So we know that Twitch, for example, is a is a big channel. Um, there's a lot of different um, ways that you can activate through that channel, for example, that, you know, I think um, could make sense for Stella, right? Our consumer is um, you know, a little bit older um and, and their passion points are 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 different. Um, but we have not, but it's not something that we we would we would not do. I think we would just want to do it in a way that um, really felt like the Stella kind of story um, yeah. and was 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 kind of driving the message of savoring and together. Um, but yeah, definitely open to it and and kind of definitely looking to evolve from a media perspective all the time. Um, I know TikTok was part of the conversation earlier, not something that um, alcohol and beer brands can play yet, but <laughs> definitely, you know, an area that we, we always keep an eye on to make sure that we know what's going on. 
Yeah, it's it's the the TikTok thing's been pretty wild. I did wonder about asking, but I was I I, I know it's not a bit there of, yet. No, 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 yes. not, not yet. <laughs> I, as in everything, there 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 will always be evolution. So yeah. Um, okay, and I guess in the theme of, of twenty twenty, uh, you know, obviously, I mean, all things digital, all things ecom, specific specifically, um, you know, some like loosening on regulations in terms of like alcohol sales online, the the rise of Drizzly, GoPuff, other things like that. Like, can you, how, how has that impacted your business? It's been, it's been huge. I mean, I think um, in many ways, uh, Sela had been, you know, e-commerce and, and beer um, delivery where we're obviously legal was a huge focus before the pandemic, obviously a bit tougher um, from a scaled, you know, national perspective, as you've said, but a big focus, we know that premium brands, especially like Excel do really well in e-commerce and, and obviously in a lot of the cities where um, it's just much more advanced and mature in terms of a channel. Um, it's where a lot of our product and volume sits. So always been a big focus, um, but has, has kind of exploded in the same way as you can imagine. Um, so we've done a ton um, with Drizzly and many of our other partners, um, a lot with our e-retailers, right, um, where we can and, and Seven Now and some of those pieces. You can see the dog in the background, sorry. Um, but we're also we're also seeing a lot of traction around, you know, merch collaborations, um, which has been a big part of this year. We, we, we worked with Carla Welsh, who's a celebrity stylist, and did a custom merch collaboration, which you could buy online. So trying to obviously from a beer sales big focus and will continue to be um but expanding kind of the e-commerce experience through through merch through chalice sales right which is which is huge big opportunity for us so um yeah it's, it's a big part of our plan um it, now and will continue to be next year as well oh so that, the, the yeah. chalice sales that's interesting yes. uh, a bit more about that i mean that obviously the the obvious question they're so breakable like <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's complicated right it's, <laughs> yeah, but you know to that point it um we what we've been trying to do in all of our programs is make sure that the beer and the chalice come together right and yeah. sometimes doesn't always come in the same um with the same partner based on regulations um but we did something a, a just a couple months ago in new york um called stadium bites where you know consumers um we partnered with the new york giants actually and consumers could have a chance to have an upgraded, you know, stadium meal at home. And we delivered to them the food, the chalice and the beer. And so that type of like at home experience has been a big part of it and, and allows us to link up both the product and the glassware, which, and, and give consumers what they want from with an, with an occasion and an experience. So that's been a big focus. Yeah. And it just, it just does does taste better, I think. I know, and I've gotten, <laughs> water tastes good too, but, but beer tastes uh, even better inside inside the chalice. And I mean, we can't talk about e-com really in, in, in 2020 and, you know, it, the, the modern age without talking about unboxing um, <laughs> and, 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 you know, the, the amount, the crazy amount of sort of investment, I think, that goes into that. Like, do you, is that something that you sort of factored in or is it a little bit more scattered because of the regulations that you No, I mean, obviously I've uh, um, uh, many people on the team and that focus on all and all and they're, they're amazing uh, humans to go through all of the details on how to execute it. Um, but yeah, the, the gifting, right. I think as a premium brand, it's, it's everything from the package it comes in, you know, and, and sometimes how it's delivered right for stadium bites. It was, it was a smaller pilot. So we were able to have, people on bikes delivering it by hand, right? Um, but it, but it's all a big part of, I think, the experience. So the the box itself, the unboxing of it, what what are the other things that we can put on and put in um, to enhance and, and elevate that experience, even if it's at home with with by yourself or with, with the loved ones that you're there with. So yeah, big part of it. It's amazing what people will do and film themselves on boxing. <laughs> So I, know. I, I give you a ton of credit and support it. <laughs> and and I guess moving away from from your own brand just for a moment, like what yeah. what else have you seen this year that you've loved, kind of in the in the marketing landscape or personally from a yeah. sort of consumption point of view? Um, you know, I think there's been. I mean, everyone is. I you know, tons of credit to to all of the brands and the teams and the agencies that have just I think 
put ideas on fire um, in, in a good way. Um, you know, I think what Resi is doing um, in terms of kind of uh, not the underdog, but the smaller of the players, I guess, if you want to say on on restaurants and, and doing their experiential programs, I think has been really interesting. We've definitely obviously been um, looking at how they're activating um, in both a, a virtual and real life setting. Um, I, I have been an Etsy long time kind of fan, and I think just seeing just how they're um, communicating this idea of local and, and, and kind of like personal crafts and community, I, I think has been really interesting. And, and then of course the, the typicals, but, you know, Nike and what they continue to do from a storytelling perspective has been really, um, obviously some of the best. So I think everyone has really, um, upped their game. Um, and I think, uh, in, in all the different types of categories and a really great job, um, uh, and, and, uh, so long there with them on, on doing activations that make sense and that people care about. Cool. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely agree. I think that the, um, the Etsy one's very cool. I mean, it's very, it, there, there's been like, obviously Amazon have had an amazing year of course, yeah. um, and, and it makes a lot of sense as to why. Um, and I think, you know, there could have been a real, a real danger of sort of small businesses and local businesses suffering just because of the the convenience and the ease, you know, being, I mean, always a factor, but ever more so this year, combined with the fact that maybe they weren't even allowed to be open. So I think uh, Etsy is such an important platform, I think. Um, it, I think it's a really good example of brands that, um, you know, have a local tie, right, and and mean something, but um, obviously have that scale. So we, we definitely keep an eye on them um, and just, you know, want Sella to continue to grow and, and have those types of um, experiences and, and stories as well. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, um, I'm kind of out of questions. I, th I think we're at time. Um, I don't know if we have any more sort of coming in from the from the um, audience, but uh, ah, I see Rita. So I think we are indeed at that <laughs> time. So that, that was good timing, actually. So yeah, that was perfect. I was actually while I was off camera, I was practicing my nine-step pouring ritual. Um, <laughs> I love it. We we've made a three-step to make it easier for you as is well. Is it three so now? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's how much time you have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's a dumbed-down version, right? That's the three-step is open the lid, <laughs> tilt the bottle. <laughs> pour in the, still pour in the chalice and drink and enjoy yes the chalice and drink there there's your three-step pour process it's it's really simple it gets right down to the to the nitty-gritty love it thank you so much uh kyle uh great job moderating and thank you so much lara for some uh, great insights and thank and you, i love guys. how you're able to you know talk not just not just about stella but actually about you know just overall what the organization is doing and specifically i love the drinking water initiative uh, that you guys are doing. I mean, millions of people without drinking water, things that we take for granted uh, where we live. Um, and I think what you've done is terrific and it fits so nicely with what Stella is all about. So thank you so much for both of you for being here today. Thank yeah, you. thank you so much. And we'll Thanks. talk soon. Bye bye. Amazing. Great. Thank you. Um, so to all of our wonderful speakers and moderators uh, that have